personal obsession with test scores. And even when we as individuals tell ourselves that they don't define us, they don't define our kids, as a nation we have invested these scores with a whole lot of importance. And I think we do that because on some deep level, we believe that they measure what matters. But the educators and the scientists who I wrote about in this book have identified this very different set of skills that they say matter at least as much as IQ, and quite possibly more so. The list includes things like grit and curiosity, conscientiousness, self-control, optimism. If you ask an economist, they'll tell you this is a list of non-cognitive skills. That's their term. Psychologists often call them personality traits. Neuroscientists like the term executive function. And educators, I think, often refer to them as character skills. So a few years ago, when I started working on this book, I, I set out to follow two paths at the same time. First of all, I spent a lot of time reporting on people who were working directly with children, trying to help them succeed. So that meant a lot of educators, but also mentors and pediatricians. And then I spent a lot of time reading the research in all of these fields, in neuroscience, in psychology, in economics, trying to understand just what we knew about how children succeed. Something else happened just as I was starting my reporting that changed my perspective on these questions somewhat, which is that my wife and I had our first child. Our son, Ellington, is now four. So I had a strange experience, especially in his first year of life, that I'd often be spending my mornings locked in my office at home, reading these dense neuroscience texts about the importance of early brain development. And then I'd be spending my afternoons rolling around in the living room carpet with my son, trying not to let myself get too self-conscious about how what I was reading in the morning connected with what I was doing with him in the afternoon. But it was hard not to think of him as my little experimental subject. And the research that had the biggest impact on me as a parent, especially during those early years, all had to do with the biology of stress. And the person who guided me through that more than anyone else was a pediatrician in San Francisco named Nadine Burke Harris. And Nadine was especially valuable to me as a source and as a subject for a couple of reasons. First of all, she's a medical doctor and I'm a journalist. And she and I were both getting interested in this research on stress at about the same time, so she could explain to me what these papers said. But even more than that, I found myself drawn to her personal story. Nadine grew up in relative affluence. She's the daughter of Jamaican immigrants who grew up in Silicon Valley. She went off to medical school and then to the Harvard Graduate School of Public Health. And then she came back to San Francisco, and as a pretty young woman, she did this rather daring thing, which is that she started her own pediatric clinic, the first one of its kind in the poorest neighborhood in San Francisco, a neighborhood called Bayview Hunters Point. And first, Nadine, you know, thought she had all the answers to every question. She was doing exactly what you're supposed to do as an inner city pediatrician. She was improving the immunization rates for her patients giving them the medicines they needed when they got sick. But as time went on, she found herself increasingly haunted by this sense that what was really making her patients sick were things that she couldn't possibly immunize them against. Mm -hmm. It was the stress and the trauma, the noise and the violence and the chaos that surrounded them every day. The way she put it to me is that she often felt more like a battlefield surgeon than like a primary care physician, just patching these kids up and sending them back into and the frustration that she felt made her want to understand better what was really going on in the lives of her young patients. So she started to read this research in stress and trauma. She found this one study about the long-term effect of childhood trauma that really changed her perspective on her work. And in fact, it really changed her life. This study finds that if you take any group of adults, the ones who have experienced significant amounts of trauma in childhood have heart disease rates that are twice as high as normal. They have cancer rates that are twice as high as normal. Emphysema rates, four times as high as normal. Suicide rates, 12 times as high. And what we now understand is that the mechanism behind that phenomenon is stress. Every infant experiences stress. You know, the baby gets sad or scared or lonely. She cries and wails. And then usually somebody picks her up and holds her and comforts her. And for most babies, this is actually a positive experience, this cycle. The stress response system is in many ways like a muscle, and it needs this kind of regular exercise in order to develop. 